Good morning and welcome to our thought for the week. I'm sure by now you are getting ready for the coronation on Saturday. I'm sure many of you have plans to watch it um, and maybe some activities that you're taking part in or events that you're attending alongside that as well. But it's exciting again, isn't it, that as part of that, the religious ceremony will be central. And it's brilliant to think that that will be taking central stage um, on the world uh, viewing of the coronation. And it's great to think that that biblical element, that religious element, is still part of our coronation. And when I was looking up the coronation for King Charles on the front of the coronation uh, order of service, it says celebrating community, faith and service. And I thought that was a wonderful reminder to us as well, isn't it, about what we should be thinking about um, as we think about how we uh, mix with people and maybe even lead people in different roles that you have. We think about community and faith and service. And as I was thinking, of course, about community, um, I was wanting to extend again a welcome to you to our uh, coronation picnic on Sunday. Um, if you're at church, to hang around after church or to arrive at church for about 1pm um, and bring along your own picnic and tea and coffee will be provided and there'll be some activities um, and some crafts and things for the children as well. And to celebrate with our church community, the coronation of King Charles. And I hope that you'll be able to come along and join us on Sunday for that. But as we think back to the coronation service itself and what will actually happen, it is of course very symbolic, but it's wonderful that many of those symbols link directly with um, biblical truth, things from the Bible. Charles will be given a ring um, to be a sign of his um, marriage to, the, to Britain, to his empire, to who he will be ruling. And on that ring, there will be a cross. So that cross is there on the ring that he will wear as a reminder, of course, of who the ultimate king is and who he should be uh, following in the footsteps of, of our King Jesus. And that's wonderful to think that that cross is centrally there. There's also a scepter that Charles will receive during the ceremony that is topped with a dove. And the dove, of course, being the symbol of the Holy Spirit and being there on top of the scepter showing that it's leading and guiding and providing wisdom as we all need from the Holy Spirit, but for King Charles at this time. There will be the orb, um, which of course represents the earth. And on top of that is the cross to show that Jesus is King over all the earth, that cross representing him just on top there, which is just wonderful to think that he is still being represented as the King of the earth. And at the heart of the ceremony, there will be the anointing of King Charles. And that anointing actually dates back to biblical times. We can see the anointing of King Solomon in the Bible by Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet. And in fact, I was reading that King Charles has actually asked for the oil that will be used to anoint him to come from the Mount of Olives and to be prepared in Jerusalem. So it will be where we believe King Solomon's oil will also have come from that anointed him in biblical times. So there's a wonderful connection there to the Bible as Charles will be anointed and that will take place as a very central and important part of the ceremony. Charles will also then uh, wear two crowns um, at different points during the coronation. Uh, the first crown that he will actually be crowned with will be St Edward's crown which um, I remember reading that the Queen had found extremely heavy and very, very difficult to wear. So he will be allowed to remove that then and put on the Imperial State Crown. Again, both these crowns have crosses to represent the central part of Christ within this ceremony. But as I was thinking about Charles also wearing two crowns, um, it was making me think of that great hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns. And of course, then we're looking towards our King, King Jesus. And we think about Jesus being represented as different things in that hymn, being crowned with different crowns. As Charles and will wear two crowns, we think about Jesus being crowned. We hear crown him the Lord of life because Jesus, of course, died and rose again to forgive us life, to provide life for everyone. He is the King of all life. He is the King of everything. In fact, is everything he created and everything he has provided life for. 
The second verse tells us to crown him the Lord of love because of course Jesus is the King of love. He is the ultimate example of how we should love others and how he gave his gift of love to us. And we sing about crowning him the Lord of years because Jesus is always there. God has always been with us. God was there before anything was created. He is over all years and all times. So King Charles will be crowned on Saturday and will be our king for a time. We don't know what that set time will be. But the wonderful thing in that verse that we sing, crown Jesus the Lord of years, is that Jesus is the king forever. His kingdom will never run out. His ruling will never end. So as you watch the coronation on Saturday, I hope that you are inspired to think about our King, about Jesus. And I hope you're inspired to think about the time that you will stand before that most amazing throne, the throne of God above, that we hear that we can stand in front of because of Jesus. He provides the way for us to do that. As we read in Revelation 17 verse 14, describing Jesus, it says, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So as we think about the throne of Charles on Saturday, let's think about that throne of God. Let's think about being called by King Jesus, chosen to be there whenever we have the opportunity to come before that throne. And let's think about being faithful, faithful to King Jesus, that King that we sing about that is crowned with many crowns, that is the King of everything. And let's praise God and thank him as we remember not only King Charles this Saturday, but the opportunity for us to come before the throne of God and to praise and thank God for that wonderful opportunity that we can have in the future. And I also want to encourage you as it comes towards Saturday to pray um, for the change um, that is coming with King Charles taking the throne. And obviously he has been in power since his mother died, but this is his opportunity to show his leadership and what way he's going to go. And there's a lovely prayer that you can find in Hope Together online, um, which is a lovely prayer for the coronation of King Charles and just asking for our King, for King Jesus to be with Charles as he moves forward and leads his people. So just as I finish this morning, we'll just, I'll lead you in that prayer and hopefully you can take it on and pray for him as well as we come towards Saturday and beyond as he then takes his leadership after his special service on Saturday morning. So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we pray today for our new King Charles III. Grant him your peace as he commits himself again to your service. Give him strength and perseverance as he promises to serve us all as King. May he know you are walking with him day by day. Help him to fulfill his vows and promises. May he follow the example of Jesus, the ultimate King of Kings. God bless the King. Amen. Thank you for joining with me this morning and I hope you enjoy all your coronation celebrations and enjoy the coronation service indeed on Saturday morning and hope to see you on Sunday at our picnic and joining together as a church community to celebrate that together. Look forward to seeing you again soon.